built on the open internet, all built around interoperable standards and protocols and, and digital currency, um, which is really where the, the origin of Circle came from. Circle today, I mean, we're, um, we're uh, about 250 people um, with offices in the US, Europe, and Asia. Um, and we operate several different businesses. We have um, a uh, exchange business, which is Poloniex, uh, which is a, a business that we acquired um, that has customers in over 150 countries, um, and uh, about 70% of the customers are outside the U.S. actually, so it's already very international. Um, we have uh, a simplified uh, retail brokerage-like product called Circle Invest, which um, allows people in the U.S. only right now to like, connect their bank accounts and instantly purchase around a dozen different crypto assets and do recurring buys and, and, and sort of buy collections of assets. Um, that's a mobile-centric product um, that's sort of on the retail side. Um, we also run um, one of the largest OTC trading businesses in crypto, Circle Trade, which you know, trades with um, really a very broad range of the ecosystem um, everything from, you know, crypto funds to exchanges to other trading desks and market makers, high net worth individuals, family offices, um, asset managers, you know, really, really broad. Um, and that's an institutional type product uh, for people who are trading large volumes of, you know, the sort of top digital assets. So we're a liquidity provider and a service provider um, in that. And, and that business is also very international. I think about um, 35, 40 percent of it is is North American. Uh, Asia is uh, similarly around, you know, 30, 35 percent, and and then um, sort of Europe more broadly is its remainder. But it's also global, um, and so we do we have operations in Hong Kong that supports that um, and and supports sort of onboarding of institutional clients as well. Um, and then um, you know another major initiative that we launched. Um, last year, but we had been working on for quite some time is something called um, US dollar coin. And um, US dollar coin is uh, sort of the fastest growing, uh, financially transparent, uh, stable coin um, issued by regulated, you know, financial companies. So it's today issued by Circle and Coinbase. It's very different than other, you know, other platforms out there. We can maybe talk about that in more detail in a little bit, but that's grown quite fast. It's about 420, 430 million in circulation. We've tokenized over a billion dollars um, on that platform. And, and that's really kind of fundamental to, uh, we think the future of all of crypto finance is this sort of tokenized digital fiat digital currency and using smart contracts and other things to build services around that. Um, and then the last piece of what we do is um, we run a fundraising platform. So we acquired a company earlier this year called Seed Invest, which is a regulated broker dealer um, in the U.S. It is a company that's innovated for about four years in digital online fundraising. So they, their current business is helping startups to issue securities and sell them to investors over the internet entirely digitally. And they're one of the largest players in that space in the U.S. Um, and they help from seed stage to, you know, even sort of mid-stage companies do these digital securities offerings on the internet and support the whole end-to-end -end process to do that in a regulated, registered way. Um, and that's a business where we're working very, very hard to start doing, you know, registered regulated token offerings um, using security tokens and, and tokens that uh, would be deemed to be securities uh, as well. So that's, that's sort of the scope of, of what we're up to. Wow, that's, that's excellent. Thank you so much for, for the overview. And you guys have definitely been keeping busy. And uh, yeah. I want to just toggle back to, to USDC and yeah, there's been a lot of great news, you know, recently, obviously about uh, USDC adoption sort of reaching a billion in less than a year. Um, I just wanted to, to double click on that and ask you, why do you think it's been able to grow this quickly and what are your ambitions for it long term? Well, I mean, I think just stepping way back, I think um, it, it kind of comes back to like why we started Circle in the first place. And, and if you actually go go back and find the very first like, you know, blog post that we did in the fall of 2013. It talks a lot about our vision for global digital currency and what we think that looks like for people and businesses everywhere. And I think the, this idea that you could have, you know, open standard protocols for money to flow on the internet the same way that content and data and messages and other things flow on the internet was really attractive. And that's what was attractive about digital currency to us. 
And in particular, it, it's even more exciting, not just because you, you know, with that, with that kind of model of, you know, taking traditional government money or fiat money and, and turning it into digital currency and allowing it to work anywhere the internet works, it's also exciting because it becomes programmable. And so back in 2013, a lot of the ideas that were being thrown around in crypto were sort of tied to this idea that you'd have programmable money. And, you know, even with Bitcoin, people were excited, like, hey, you know, can we expand the script function of Bitcoin to be able to do more smart contracts and, and actually make money programmable in, in more powerful ways? I think that brought a lot of technologists like Sean and myself into this because we, we could see, like, if you could actually take economic arrangements between people or economic arrangements between people and businesses or, or, or whatnot and put them in code and execute them in trustless ways on the Internet and you could have money be able to move at the speed and of the internet with the safety and efficiency of, uh, of the internet and, and the security and privacy of crypto, like that's really transformative. So that's sort of what got us into this. Um, it just, it took a really long time for really for the, for the infrastructure, for the regulatory environment, for the banking kind of partnerships. There's like a lot of things that had to evolve to really make some of these things viable. So, you know, one precondition was you needed like production scale um, blockchains that could run smart contracts and could issue tokens that third party developers were building on and, and that, you know, you could build ecosystems around. And that, you know, that really took Ethereum to get off the ground and not just like be mainnet and in production, but it actually, you know, we needed to see that it was becoming mature, that you could safely build things on it that you know there, there were uh, there were paths forward for other developers to be able to start to do things. So really, when um, you know but, you know starting really in late 2016 is when we started to work on what's called Center. And um, you know for us the idea of of you know stable coins that's sort of the phrase people use now. We back in, back then we we talked about fiat tokens, but um, you know the idea of stable coins you know it, it's really critical in our view that you know, the, the, they're fungible and interoperable and that you have standards for how people issue them and redeem them and run them. And that was really critical that it's not just like a whole bunch of different companies launching stable coins, um, which is sort of like going back to, you know, private banking in the late 1800s in the U.S., but instead you actually could come up with a consortium model with standards and open technical standards that anyone could implement that were published as open APIs that developers could freely innovate on top of, and then have consortium rules, kind of scheme governance for how it worked across all the different issuers that could build on that. And so we had developed the technology and the ideas behind that going into, um, you know, through 2017 and early 2018. And then um, we, uh, you know, we got together with Coinbase, who really just shared a lot of the same ideas at Circle about what an open financial system could look like and the desire for having a standards, you know, mechanism and a, and a governance mechanism like this. And so they were really just a natural partner to co-found the consortium with. Um, so we, we put that together and, um, and obviously that's grown. Getting back to your core question though, which is sort of why is it, you know, growing so fast, et cetera. You know, I think our insight was, you know, when you, when, when we got started, obviously things like Tether existed um, and Tether remains a very robust, you know, crypto asset in terms of its market activity. But what it really seemed to us is that, you know, it was unlikely that like the future of open finance was going to be built on Tether, that um, you you definitely were going to need, if you're going to have, you know, mainstream, you know, businesses, merchants, if you're going to have people issuing, you know, securities, debt contracts, all kinds of things interacting with an infrastructure, right? It was It was going to have to be more mainstream and not just like an offshore opaque kind of quasi shadow banking thing. And so um, we wanted to do this kind of out in the open. And we believed that the market would want something where they knew that the, 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 the rails were you know, being handled by regulated compliant you know, financial institutions where the, the, the project itself was sort of governed uh, with multiple stakeholders that the actual assets themselves were truly financially transparent, where there's proof of reserves, where there's major auditing firms that are evaluating the, those accounting procedures and attesting to all that and the balances every month. Um, and that it actually like worked with seamless fiat rails, right? It's really critical that 
the on and off ramps, like anybody, you know, basically can kind of wire in and out and, and or, you know, get that going. So all those things we thought were going to be really important. And it's turned out that they are. I mean, people want, you know, uh, they want kind of high quality companies that they feel are, are there. They want to know that there's, you know, some safety around it, um, that, you know, the funds aren't stolen or running, people running off at them or fractional or any of that kind of stuff. And those are important. And I think the combination of sort of Circle's really strong position with the institutional community because of what we've been able to build out with Circle Trade and, and Coinbase's, you know, really strong kind of retail position anchored it really, really well. And because we did it in this very open way, it, you know, third parties, you know, also adopted it really quickly. So made